a lawyer for former DNC IT staffer Imran Awan, is scrambling to block evidence found on a hidden laptop which may contain proof of a massive spy ring operating at the highest levels of Congress in what may be the largest breach of national security in U.S. history. Awan, a Pakistani national, works for dozens of Democratic members of Congress, along with his wife, two brothers, and a friend. Following the publication of DNC emails by WikiLeaks in the lead-up to the 2016 election, congressional investigators discovered that the Awans had a secret server being housed at the Democratic Caucus, backed up to an off-site Dropbox account. According to a briefing, all five of the shared employees, system administrators, collectively logged on to the House Democratic Caucus system 5,735 times, or an average of 27 times per day, despite only one of them being authorized to do so. The Awans were banned from the House IT network on February 2nd. 2017, after being named in a criminal investigation. However, they continued to work in the building for con Congressman Debbie Wasserman Schultz until Imran Awan's arrest at Dulles Airport, trying to flee the country in late to July. Awan and his wife, Hina Alvi, were charged with a conspiracy and bank fraud in relation to a real estate transaction. The laptop in question was tucked away in a tiny room, formerly used as a phone booth, on the second floor of the Rayburn House office building, late one night in March, only to be found by Capitol Police just after midnight on April 2, 2017, along with notebooks marked attorney-client privilege. Letters addressed to the U.S. Attorney of DNC regarding Debbie Wasserman Schultz and several forms of identification. Based on the contents of the backpack, some believed Iwan wanted the laptop to be found. Attorney Client Privilege Luke Rosiak of the Daily Caller, who has been tracking the Iwan case, reports that Iwan's attorney Chris Gowan, a former aide to Hillary Clinton, is seeking to block the laptop evidence by arguing the attorney-client privilege note attached to the notebook found with the laptop covers the contents of the hard drive, according to court papers filed Tuesday. Via the Daily Caller, Chris Gowan, a one's attorney, said the last hearing, We do expect there being an attorney-client privilege issue in this case. What occurred is a backpack from my client was found and he was trying to get the better signal. There was a note that said attorney-client privilege and a hard drive. We feel very strongly about this. A Capitol Police report reveals the following items were found in the backpack. Number one, a Pakistani ID card with the name Mohammed Ashraf Awan. Number two, a copy not original, of a driver's license with the name Imran Iwan. Number three, a copy, front and back, of his congressional ID. Number four, an Apple laptop with the home screen initials Rep DWS. Number five, composition notebooks with notes handwritten saying, attorney-client privilege, and possibly discussing case details below. Number six, Loose letters addressed to U.S. Attorney of D.C. discussing the apparent owner of the bag being investigated. As Rosiak points out, it's unclear how the handwritten note saying attorney-client privilege could be construed to cover a hard drive rather than the pages of the notebook it was contained on. Andrew McCarthy, a former Chief Assistant U.S. Attorney who has followed the case, said the A.C. Privilege only applies to communications between the client and lawyer that are for the purpose of seeking legal advice and that are intended by both parties to be kept confidential. Moreover, asserting that something is AC protected does not make it so. You still have to show that the material in question constitutes communications strictly between the lawyer and client that were for the purpose of seeking legal advice. If I give my lawyer my bank records 
and ask them if they show evidence of a crime. The bank records do not become AC privilege. Only his advice to me would be AC privilege. And if I stuck a sign on my bank records that said AC privilege documents, that would not make them AC privilege documents, he told the Daily Caller News Foundation Wednesday. Debbie Downer. In May of 2016, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, an employer and personal friend of Awan, spent several minutes browbeating the chief of DC Capitol Police at a budget meeting, claiming the laptop should be given back since it was hers and threatening consequences if it wasn't returned. The Awan brothers were managing computers for members of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, a group with top secret clearance, which is now looking into Russian election interference. Also of note, the brothers were shared employees, hired by multiple Democrats for IT work whenever it was needed, so they floated all over the place doing all sorts of work on House members' computers. Democrats Joaquin Castro, Cedric Richmond, Andre Carson, Jackie Spire, Tammy Duckworth, and Louis Frankel all employed the Yuans. Information Brokers Judge Andrew Napolitano appeared on Fox Business Network in late July where he dropped a bombshell. Not only did the Yuans have access to the emails of every member of Congress, Imran Awan reportedly sold information to still unknown parties, which the FBI is currently investigating. Napolitano. He was arrested for some financial crime. That's the tip of the iceberg. The real allegation against him is that he had access to the emails of every member of Congress and that he sold what he found in there. What did he sell and whom did he sell it? That's what the FBI wants to know. This may be a very, very serious national security situation. Varney. Wait a second, he was the IT worker along with two Pakistani brothers for DWS and other Democrats in the House, and the theory is that he got access to all their secrets or whatever and sold some? Napolitano. Yes, and this was at the time that Congressman Schultz was also the chair of the Democratic National Committee. So at this point, I don't believe they know what he sold and to whom he sold it, but they do know what he had access to, which is virtually everything in the House of Representatives, which would include classified material in the House Intelligence Committee. Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer went even further, claiming that the Awan brothers were linked to the Muslim Brotherhood while working for Democratic Congressman Andre Carson a report reinforced by Front Page magazine. As Front Page reported in February, the office of Andre Carson, the second Muslim in Congress, had employed Imran Awan, as did the offices of Jackie Spire and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, to whom the letter had been addressed. Carson is the second Muslim in Congress and the first Muslim on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, and more critically, is the ranking member on its Emerging Threats Subcommittee. He is also a member of the Department of Defense Intelligence and Overhead Architecture Subcommittee. The Emerging Threats Subcommittee, of which Carson is a ranking member, is responsible for much of counterterrorism oversight. It is the worst possible place for a man with Carson's credential. Carson had inherited his grandmother's seat and exploited it to promote a radical Islamist agenda. He has interfaced with a laundry list of Islamist group from CARE to ISNA to ICNA to MPAC. Islamists have funded Carson's career to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars. The Center for Security Policy has put together a dossier of Carson's connection to the Muslim Brotherhood. The Brotherhood is the parent organization of many key Islamic terror groups posing a threat to our national security, including Al-Qaeda and Hamas. Andre Carson shared the stage at a care banquet with Siraj Wahaj, an unindicted co-conspirator in the World Trade Center bombing who had once declared, you don't get involved in politics because it's the American thing to do. You get involved in politics because politics are a weapon 
to use in the cause of Islam. Kerr itself had been named an unindicted co-conspirator in terror finance. Immunity for Hina. In September, it was reported that Hina Alvi, Imran Awan's wife, had struck a deal with federal prosecutors to return to the U.S. from Pakistan to face conspiracy and bank fraud charges. Alvi and her children fled to the safety of Pakistan in early 2017, so her voluntary return, which was structured with an arrest to be made not in front of her children, is significant. Upon her return to the United States, Hina was arraigned on four felony counts of bank fraud and handed over her U.S. passport to prosecutors. Congressman Trent Franks, Republican from Arizona, says that Alvey's return may be part of a broader immunity deal with prosecutors in return for a significant and pretty disturbing story about Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I don't want to talk out of school here, but I think we're going to see some revelations that are going to be pretty profound. The fact that his wife is coming back from Pakistan and is willing to face charges as it were, I think there is a good chance she is going to reach some type of immunity to tell a larger story here that is going to be pretty disturbing to the American people. I would just predict that this is going to be a sig very significant story to the people and people should fasten their seatbelts on this one. And then lastly, I'd like to know how Capitol Police handle um, equipment that belongs to a member or a staffer that's been lost within the Capitol complex and found or recovered by one of your officers. What happens? Sure. Well, it's processed on, a, on, a, on a, what's called a PD-81, which is, a, which is a, a, a property record. And depending on the property, depending on how it's, if you can legitimately uh, determine ownership, then uh, it's generally turned back over to the, to the owner of the property. If, there's, if, if it's part of, uh, of an ongoing case, then there are other things that have to occur for that to happen. So if a member says that they have equipment that's been lost and you find it, it would be returned to the member? In a general sense, yes. Okay. It has, you have to identify, you have to be able to positively identify the property and be able to establish ownership. Right, and, and if ownership is established? If it's part of an ongoing case, then there are additional things that need to be done. But if the member owns the equipment and there is no ongoing case related to that member, then the equipment is supposed to be returned. Right. In, 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 in a general sense, yes. If no, I mean in a specific sense. If the member loses the equipment, says they lose the equipment, yes, and it is found by the Capitol Police, it is supposed to be returned. If ownership has been established, right. it will be returned. If it's subject uh, to an ongoing investigation, there are additional things okay. that need to be turned But on. not an ongoing investigation related to the member. If the equipment belongs to the member, it has been lost, they say it's been lost and it's been identified as that member's, and the Capitol Police is supposed to return it. Correct? Well, it's not a, a I can't give a yes or no answer on that because I know It's a simple yes or no answer. Well, if, you lo if, if, I, if a member loses the equipment yes, and it is found by the Capitol Police or your staff, and it is identified as that member, member's equipment, and the member is not associated with any case, and that is their equipment, it is supposed to be returned, yes or no? Depends on the circumstances. Uh, and if the circumstances I, are... I, I don't understand how that's possible. Member's equipment is member's equipment. It is not, it is not it, under my understanding, the Capitol Police is not able to confiscate member's equipment when the member is not under investigation. It is their equipment and it's supposed to be returned. Well, I think there's extenuating circumstances in this case, and I think, I think that, you know, working through my counsel and, um, you know, the necessary personnel, if, if that, in fact, is the case, and you know, with the permission of, through the investigation, then we'll return the equipment. But until that's accomplished, I can't return the equipment. I think you're violating the rules when you, when you conduct your business that way and should expect that there would be consequences. I yield back. Gentlemen, thank you for your testimony today. Chief, uh, Assistant Chief, we let you off easy. Uh